In Louisiana, black farmers had leased over 10,000 acres from the Freedmen's Bureau, believing they would soon own them outright. Marshal Twitchell and other Freedmen's Bureau agents delivered a different message. No matter what they'd heard, no 40 acres and a mule was coming from this government. This is what presidential reconstruction is coming to mean. It's telling the freedmen that the government is not going to pamper you. The government is not going to give you any land. You have a hard row ahead of you. Get used to it. Freedom from slavery, Twitchell informed black laborers, is not freedom from work. His words reflected worries shared by whites North and South, that freed African Americans would not work and would refuse to go back to the cotton fields. What would then happen to the cotton crop of the South? Northern industry needs that cotton. It's still the largest export of the United States. To earn foreign money, you need to export cotton. Northerners were not willing to let blacks stop growing cotton. Friedman, I think, probably would have chosen to duck out of the cotton economy altogether. You can't eat cotton. For Friedman, becoming an independent landowner is, is a dream. That's their version of the American dream. But that kind of independence for the freedmen, Southern planters don't want it, the Freedmen's Bureau doesn't want it, many Northerners in Congress don't want it. Across Louisiana, white planters now sat down to draw up labor contracts with the men they used to own. No matter what color your skin is, no matter what your status before the war had been, it's a new order for everybody. No matter what happens politically, you've got to figure out how you're going to feed yourself and your family. That's the backbeat. That's the rhythm of which everything else depends. The freed people understand that they're going to have to work, but they do not want someone riding around on a horse with a whip curled on his shoulder, as the overseer had done under slavery. And they also do not want to work for low wages. For many white Southerners, negotiating with slaves seemed unimaginable. Because in the very notion of negotiation is an assumption of some kind of equality. And for many white Southerners, they don't have anything to pay them with because they themselves are on the verge of desperation. There is now nothing between me and the nigger but the dollar, the almighty dollar, said one South Carolina planter. And I shall make out of him the most I can at the least expense. They want submissive, obedient employees. I think in their heart of hearts, they want a system that is as close to slavery as possible. Black laborers who insisted on better wages and working conditions were regularly met with threats and violence. Vigilantes lynched whole families and used the bullwhip on men and women as they had in slavery days. In 1865, more than 2,000 black men, women, and children were reported murdered in Louisiana alone. The violence in the South was a way to reestablish white supremacy. These gangs of whites pick out the guy who's trying to save his money, who's trying to get ahead. A man who is an inspiration to other black people in the community. He's the one that gets murdered. 
it amounts to systematic culling of alpha males from the black community. The Southern legal system became an instrument of intimidation. Louisiana, Texas, South Carolina, Mississippi, and Florida passed laws that virtually prohibited freedmen from any work except as field hands. The laws were called black codes. The aim was slavery without the chain. The black codes were laws passed to control and restrict and constrain the lives of the freed people, essentially rendering them bondsmen again under law. Some states made it illegal for freedmen to handle weapons and restricted them from buying or renting land. Black children could be seized from poor families and forced to work in the fields. If a black man had no job, he could be jailed and auctioned to a planter for his labor. They make a travesty of the freedom that African Americans have acquired. They are so far from any notion of fairness or freedom that even Northerners who are not egalitarians say these laws are unacceptable. And so Northern Republicans are faced with a dilemma. They don't want to have a big fight with the president, but to accept the idea that Johnson's policy is a success and accept the black codes, they feel means giving up the victory in the Civil War. To Louisiana's black veterans, one freedman offered this advice. I would say to every colored soldier, bring your gun home. 